Yo, yo, what's up? Chris Sims, Liam McHugh here to help me out because I'm not that great at this hosting thing, okay? But we got the week three cheat sheet. And I answer, uh, we opened up some questions to the public. Yes, okay. they responded. Yes. All right, they've Good. gone online. And the first one, Carrie 0078, has Kyle Shanahan mastered the oh shit play? He has. Not only, first off, this is a great question because this play has caught fire through the NFL uh, through the first two weeks of the, uh, the season. I'm seeing a lot of teams do it. And Kyle Shanahan has not only mastered the oh shit play, okay, but he invented it as well. So he is the master and the inventor, Liam. But here's the beauty of this play, okay? The first thing is this. Here we got fullback, Kyle Juszczyk, right? He is going to motion in the backfield and play the traditional fullback spot right there, okay? So there we got Kyle Juszczyk. Now, within that motion, Kyle Shanahan, Jimmy Garoppolo, they know they have man-to-man -man coverage, okay? That's what they want for the O play, okay? That's what they want. Now, here's the beauty of the play in general, okay? They're going to do a fake zone left, right? Zone left type of run scheme with the running back. Within that, Kyle Juszczyk is going to start this way, but as Jimmy Garoppolo gets here to the fake, he's going to come back underneath and block. He's going to block the edge a little bit because why, okay? Jimmy Garoppolo is going to bootleg out and then set up about right here, all right? He's going to set up there. Now, here is the beauty of this play. What really happens here, because we have man-to-man, -man, George Kittle is on the backside, one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback, okay? That's supposed to be a C there, not a, I don't know what I wrote, okay? A CB, okay? Now, usually with this type of play or action, you're thinking, Oh gosh, they faked the run this way. He's going to bootleg across this way. And we've seen George Kittle catch many footballs right in this range if you're a 49ers fan. Now, the cornerback's running with him, okay? Now, over here, we have we have one-on-one -on -one matchups with a wide receiver and corners over here. Now, this is the beauty of the play. This guy just kind of runs him off. Okay, that's great. We don't need him there. But this is what's even better about it. Marquise Goodwin, because of the run fake, he kind of acts like he's coming down here to just find some work. I'm going to pick up a linebacker, whatever else. Running back's eyes get a, I mean, the cornerback's eyes get a little lazy, right, Liam? Mm, uh, peeks in the backfield. So. Well, he does. He peeks in the backfield because he goes, wait, it looks like a well, run he's play to me. This, he's watching right. the fullback. The he's line the looks like it's blocking sure. a run play. All right. So now he takes a little peek to go, oh, wait, what's in the backfield? And by the time he realizes what's going on, Marquise Goodwin, who's kind of sneaked his way through the mosh pit of people, he comes outside the back door, and there's Jimmy Garoppolo set up with good pass protection, and nobody covering Marquise Goodwin to where Liam McHugh or anybody sitting home on the couch could have thrown a touchdown on this foot and this particular play. Yeah, you could have. I'm no, giving you that much credit. If you say so. I don't believe it. But no, it might okay. have not looked pretty, but I think you could have hit him nonetheless. Eventually. Okay, eventually. Right. Yeah, right. it could have been ugly. It might have been a duck. He comes back for it. He gets it and goes. But we're seeing this play everywhere is the point. And Kyle Shanahan has mastered it. We saw it with Sammy Watkins and Patrick Mahomes in week one. I saw the Bears try to do it this week against the Denver Broncos. Oh, I saw Kyler Murray get a huge completion <laughs> off of it against the Baltimore Ravens. So it's a great way to keep teams honest off of your zone run scheme right from over pursuing too much taking things away that'll make everybody think the next time there's a play like this ooh, I better not be too aggressive now I just have a question yes all of these lines yes are these all running and this is sort of like yeah just right if I was uh, yes it's it's yeah. called the motion line is like that usually I, in a playbook it's like yeah, kind of like a motion line. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Yes. Don't hold me accountable to my writing, my circles, this is, or my letters. All right? Yeah, They're not very good. I'm lefty. All right. You ready to move on? Yeah, Talk let's about go. the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Because okay. this is from Cam35 Johnson. Wants to talk about Kevin Stefanski. Does he run solid passing plays? Right. And sense some frustration. Yeah. I feel like I only see heavy set personnel with Diggs and Thielen running concepts by themselves. Yes. Let's start over here on this side. Well, it's a great observation, first off, by Cam 35 Johnson, because it's real. I mean, right now, the Minnesota Vikings either looks like it's a deep throw down the field or here, Dalvin Cook, please make something happen. Now, you want to talk about the first example of lack of creativity with an offense, right? And you want to know why, like, Kirk Cousins is dancing around 50% a game last week uh, as far as completions against Green Bay? Because they run plays like this, and I'm going to show you that I'm going to go, Okay, 
my little boy in, in nine years old runs this play in peewee football. That's great, but against the NFL and the Packers, not so great, okay? So here it is. We got everybody blocking up front, all right? So I'm not even going to waste my time too much here. It's my kind of max protect situation. Everybody's blocking. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into all of that, okay? Fullback comes out here to block this linebacker. He's blocking. What happens in this particular case, D. Lyman kind of busts through really early. Dalvin Cook gets in here to help him out. Now, now we got um, Kirk Cousins taking a five-step drop. Okay. We got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They've just called two go routes, right? It's a two-man route. It's, hey, Stavon Diggs, run deep. Hey, Adam Thielen, run deep. Some really, really tough game planning <laughs> stuff here. I mean, no wonder they were in the office for 18 hours a day. I mean, because they were like, how about we just go straight and go straight and block everybody? Okay, that's, so that's cutting, cutting edge stuff. This kind of stuff is just not going to get it done in the NFL. Again, here you are. What are you hoping for? A 50-50 ball? Maybe a chance where he just blows him off the line of scrimmage? You're taking a shot down the field? Okay, I have no problem with that. It's cool to take shots down the field, but there's some more creative ways to get to it. Is and what you I'm see saying. it too much. You, I, I see it way also, too is, much. Is the problem? It's yeah. Way yeah. too many simple pass concepts and whatever. And even with this play here. As, as boring as it may be, I also would like to blame Kirk Cousins, who, yeah, gets a little pressure in his face, but could have slid and still made a throw down the field to Diggs or Thielen in a 50-50 ball sure. situation. Give him a chance. It's one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one, and you Thielen's know. one of the best in that situation exactly right. anyway. He and we saw Diggs, Diggs catch a bomb well. early. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So uh, he kind of panicked when he got the pressure, and he tries to throw it to the fullback out of the backfield. But a disaster and just a good example of lack of creativity by the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Now, other side of this equation. Other side of this yeah. equation. Yeah. This is when I kind of like what they do, okay? And again, I think right now the meat and potatoes of the Minnesota Vikings, not a lot of ways to get five and 10 yard completions. It's either big shot down the field, Dalvin Cook. Yeah. And that's not always a recipe to beat really good defense. No, this is a, sort of like Kirk Cousins beats up on bad teams. Right. And but then when the Bears come to town, we can't move the ball. Problem. And yeah. they want to go, okay. But so here's a, here's a good play that was very successful for them last week. Shotgun, okay. They got Green Bay, and who's trying to blitz, but they kind of do a quick snap and catch Green Bay off, off uh, you know, what do I want to say, just off balance a little bit to where they don't get there. But really, they're bringing four week. They're trying to bring four blitzers right here week. These guys are dropping out, okay, and he's coming. And we got basically what they're trying to do is play a blitz zone coverage behind it. These guys are kind of zoning off on the, on the inside here. And this is still zone on the outside, but if there's a player in their zone, they match up. So long story short, okay, what happens here is Stefan Diggs, inside release, boom, post. Okay, he's, mm -hmm. the, he's the first read. Um, tight end over here, blocking. Now we got Ch Chad Beebe, who's going to come up and run a deep cross underneath it. And then Adam Thielen, who's going to run a shallow cross underneath that so it's a levels concept we would call this in the nfl and the read is one to two to number three on the shallow cross very easy every high school team in america has it every college team in america has it and <clears throat> excuse me it's the perfect play for this defense right here because what happens since they're blitzing basically it's a three deep coverage well once chad bb gets to the safety he knows, oh, I got to kind of be responsible for him. I can't just let him run yep. through my zone and nobody be there, right? This corner, this corner here, once he realizes he has nobody to threaten him on his deep third, his job, because the safety cut, is to kind of replace the safety and get back there. And if you remember right, this is Jair Alexander, mm -hmm. who should have intercepted the pass but waited for the ball to come here, and then there came Stefan Diggs to catch it, and it was a touchdown. But... At least this play gives a guy like Kirk Cousins some options, right? Got a little bit of everything. It's a good all-purpose play just about against any coverage. So that's the good thing about it. And then you do have six to seven-man protection capabilities in case they do blitz or do anything like that. But this was a successful example. I would like to see them find some more short to intermediate ways to throw the football. But at least this is good creative design to attack attack downfield all these weapons right so much skill in this team yeah you have to get creative at times i mean i understand that you think maybe one-on-one -on -one my guys will beat your guys and we can just work that's out fine with that from time to time fine right so more of this less of this definitely and eliminate the 
first and goal, Kirk Cousins throw an interception in the end zone play? I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. That does, that's what's mind blowing to me is why not yeah. throw this one up on a one on one situation? But why did we throw it up on first and goal from the four into triple coverage with the game on the line? I don't get that. That no. was a bad mistake. Kirk Curious. Cousins doesn't deserve all the blame here, though. Kevin Stefanski, first year offensive coordinator. Gary Kubiak's never been famous for his passing game offense either, especially when he's with Denver, and they need to find more ways to get the ball to these receivers. All right. Yeah. Third and final, ask me anything, X's and O's. This one from at Bama Fan 7. Okay. Real X's and O's. Here. Right. All right. What are the pre and post snap quarterback reads to determine cover two, three, and four? Okay. Let's start. Cover yeah. two. Bama fan, first of all, Bama yeah. fan. I feel like you should know everything. Well, about this. he just all he knows is he goes, my team goes up and down the field. I don't care what coverage it is. We're so just I'm better than good. you. It doesn't really make whatever much of a coverage difference. we call on defense, okay. it works. So just <laughs> in case you don't have that luxury, you <laughs> yes. need to know these things. So here we go. Pre-snap, right? This is a great question. I mean, this really is okay. Cover two. Here's the simplest way to look at it. Cover two, of course, means two deep safeties, all right? And in this case, the thing that a quarterback would look for, because sometimes they try to disguise safeties and they might be a down a little bit. Uh, they might even, even look like they're like on top of each other. But ultimately, what quarterbacks look to, and this is why they do dummy snap counts, right? Blue at E5, blue at E5, said hut, hut, and nobody goes, right? Because the quarterback's just trying to get a one last picture to see what it might end up looking like. And really what they're going to look for in this type of scenario is with cover two, the, the corners are down here low because their responsibility is really like flat routes. If the tight end th goes right here, then he's going to be there to get them. You know, if the receiver wanted to run a five-yard out route, sorry, it's not going to be open because he's going to squat on it because he knows he's got a safety over the top. But the biggest clue is this, Liam. When the quarterback's getting ready to say, set, hut, 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 he's going to look at these safeties. Mm -hmm. And what he'll look at when he sees this, the safeties in cover two, their first three steps should be backwards no matter what. And they will kind of go this way, disperse wide, right, to protect the corner out here and the corner out here. That's what quarterbacks are going to look for. So when they say, set, hut, 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 and if they see that safety start to go back into their half, they're going to go, ooh, it's cover two. One other clue I'll give you, too. This guy right here, the cornerback, the nickelback in this scenario, when he's inside a little bit, that usually means it's cover two is coming as well because the middle of the field is open. So he's going to try not to let this receiver just fly in the middle and now, oh my gosh, we had nothing yep. to stop and he'll be wide open. He's going to try to take that away to where the wide receiver has to come around it and then try to get in there. And then by that time, you're hoping your pass rush gets there or these guys are back to cover the zone hole, whatever it may be. That's cover two. All right, so now you're walking up yeah. to under center. Walking up under you're center. you're looking at right. cover three. What are you looking at pre-snap? Yeah, and cover three is, is as basic as this. I mean, hey, it's this guy has this third. This safety has the deep middle. This corner has this deep third. Now, but what you're looking for, and a lot of times with pre-snap and cover three, it might look like this at first, right? Okay, this cover two look. You might go, oh gosh, it's cover two. But then there's Brady, blue 85, blue 85, said hut. He raises his leg, like, give me the ball. Oh no, he saw the safeties rotate down. Okay, and here's the other safety yep. down here in the box, right? So now if he sees that type of movement, he's going to go, ooh, I'm getting something single safety, most likely cover three, and he'll know it's cover three because more times than not, these guys are not up in your face playing bump man to man, right? It's cover three. They kind of back off because their job is not to let anybody go past them. Don't let anybody go deep. And within that, that's what they're looking at. You know, you'll have a player here kind of responsible for the curl flat. He's going to go back into here somewhere. You got a player. He'll try to protect this area, and then he'll worry about the curl flat to there. But that's, in basic terms, your cover three defense. Three deep, four underneath. And what are you thinking when you get to the line? Like, who are you looking at as a quarterback? Yeah, like, right. As an option. The first thing, I mean, as an option, the best thing about cover three, the thing you'll like more than anything, is you're going to go, basically, I have one-on-one -on -one out here. I can throw a 20-yard out route or a comeback or anything like that. As long as these guys don't get too much depth underneath it, that's where it's great. Also, when another thing that's great about cover three for a quarterback's perspective, right, is when you see, okay, we got eight guys by the line of scrimmage. You do a little run fake, they get real aggressive, 
you can get a lot of big holes right behind it, and that's where you see deep crosses and things like that come into play. So there's your cover three basic terms. This is an example of cover three strong, right? The safety has gone mm -hmm. strong. Sometimes it could be the other way, where the backers are kicked over in this way, but the brave basic premises is one guy in the middle, three deep coverage. All right, right. we'll finish up cover four. Right. What are you eyeing? Cover four now is a little different, and again, you're always going to deal with disguises, but cover four at its base level is... That quarter, that quarter, that quarter, that quarter. Hence, cover four. It's quarters coverage. You'll hear sometimes if you, they're playing quarters coverage, and they just mean these four guys got a quarter of the field behind them. Okay? And really, what a quarterback pre snap is going to look at, because we've showed you other things, it's a little bit more of a level look. You see how it's a little more level as compared to our cover two look, where the corners were real low and the safeties were real wide. This one's almost like a straight across, oh, we're playing. Now, a lot of teams will try to make it look like cover two pre-snap. And then what you got to look for is the safeties don't go high and wide in cover four. They kind of just go straight back, mm -hmm. and it's right in that line there. The corners, of course, here, they're not playing that cover two hard press over here like they are cover two. So they back off, and their job is to stop that. So yep. those are the clues you're looking for as a quarterback. Ooh, they kind of look like they're going all on the same level. Oh, it's cover forward, not cover two. And one other little thing that you can get here is because these guys aren't going high and wide, this corner right here in cover four, he might be more on the outside shade of this wide receiver because he's not afraid if they run in there. The safety's not too high and wide to where there's help there this time as compared to cover two where this guy wants to go inside and make you kind of reroute and go around it. When you played, who was yeah. the best at disguising this? Oh. Like, who, like, well, who gave you fits? The first team, I, and, uh, you know, not that I played a ton of, ton of football, but the New England Patriots were phenomenal. My one chance I got to play them, and they beat our ass 27 to nothing. <laughs> but, you know, they would never make the same coverage look the same on a given play. So, yeah, you would come up and go, ooh, it looks like cover two, and you're going through the snap count, and, oh, what's cover two, what's cover two? And just as you're getting ready to say set hut, oh, something's changed, and it's not cover two, yeah. and it's all of a sudden the safeties do this, and it's cover three, and you're going, oh, gosh, and you're going through all your rules in your head again. Uh, so the, the, but the, they're patient. They're not moving. Really yeah, patient. Like that's where they're letting you study get right comes to in. that point where you're going to, yeah. That's where the audio from the TV copy, well, let's listen to his snap count so we can get a good feel for when to make our final move. That's what really good defenses do, and, of course, the Patriots do because they're kind of good. Yeah, they're yeah, good at pretty much good doing everything. At everything, right. <laughs> There you go, a little coverage tutorial, quarterback style, pre-snap clues. Well Peace. done. You're the man. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.